when I think of people like Bob Marley, Moses Hogan, Clemente Pinckney, I wonder what they could have become had they lived. And I also wonder about the circumstances that surrounded their death. In the case of Bob Marley, there was an assassination attempt by guns less than a year before he was diagnosed with skin cancer. So in December of 1976 was the assassination attempt using guns. And in 1977, in the summer of 1977, was when he was diagnosed with a skin cancer. And Moses Hogan also died of a brain tumor, and um, Clemente Pinckney died in a supposed massacre that could have been a cover-up for an assassination. Um, Johnny Cochran and Robert Kardashian, both top lawyers in the O.J. Simpson trial, were both diagnosed in 2003. Um, Robert Kardashian with esophageal cancer and Johnny Cochran with a brain tumor, both in 2003. And I wonder about the methods used to kill people and how over time, they can become more sophisticated. And also with, with uh, past experiences, those who carry out these assassinations can perhaps recognize that in killing certain people using certain methods could actually be counterproductive to their plan. See, the plan is to erase those who would oppose. So for instance, if someone like Martin Luther King, you know, or Malcolm X was going against the establishment, wipe them out, get them, get them out of the way, you know, or William Cooper, you know, get them out of the way so that they don't mess up the agenda. However, if you kill them in a certain way, they become martyrs. Like, you know, in the case of Martin, Martin Luther King, they become martyrs, you know, they were fighting for good, you know, and, and they were killed for fighting for good. And that actually um, makes them even more famous in death than they were in life. And of course, those who kill them don't want that unless they can, like in the case of Martin Luther King and in the case of Bob Marley, unless they're able to commodify and unless they're able to take hold of the image of these people and craft it in a, in a way that it actually... Um, that it actually supports their agenda. So if they're able to actually change the image of these people to fit to fit them into their agenda, then I guess it would be okay to perpetuate a false representation of these people that they've murdered. Like, you know, with Martin Luther King, who is actually starting to question um, some of his beliefs. Um, and also in the case of Bob Marley, he was changed from a revolutionary willing to die for what he believed in into a free-loving hippie who smoked marijuana and, you know, was very, very much so commodified. So how do you kill a person and also erase their, their legacy or their impact? Well, one method is to kill them before they become as famous as a Malcolm X or Bob Marley or Martin Luther King. So in the case of Clemente Pinckney, you know, he was not, he was not, he wasn't a national figure yet. I mean, he was eloquent. He was very knowledgeable of the Bible. Um, he led the church that Denmark V.C. co-founded. And, uh, you know, he was a state senator and, you know, he, he, he had the charisma, but he wasn't nationally known. So if you get them before they become nationally known, then people won't be familiar with them. And therefore, you prevent any kind of influence that they might have had on a larger scale. Um, another way 
that you can prevent your opposition from gaining the notoriety that they, that they would have naturally had they lived is that you kill them in a way that it doesn't look like murder. So in the case of Bob Marley, for instance, you know, they had attempted the assassination that that didn't work out. So, you know, coincidentally, the next year he's diagnosed with cancer. Um, I remember my freshman year in college and there was a, a white student who had a poster of Bob Marley up. And, you know, I, I don't know why, like, I asked him how Bob Marley died. And he said, I don't know, I guess he smoked too much weed. And that's just, that's the commodification of Bob Marley. And the way that not only have they commodified him, but they've made his death a part of that commodification in the sense that there are people who believe that Bob Marley died of cancer because he smoked too much marijuana, therefore making his death not only not worthy of martyrdom, but his own fault. You see? So there's a method in the killing of revolutionaries, of, of those who would be martyrs, in that you make them, you, you erase their martyrdom, or you, you deprive them of martyrdom, by making their death seem like either it's their own fault or just some chance, you know, like, hey, every, you know, cancer's on the rise, you know, so anyone can get it. Maybe they had a bad diet. Maybe they smoked too much marijuana. Maybe they were too stressed out. But no one looks at the fact that evil people will go to great lengths, you know, subtle like serpents. They'll go to great lengths to cover up their their sins or their um, their murders and it's uh, I'm not a scientist so as far as you know I, I know that they inject mice with cancer um, I know that they have biological labs where they are testing out these diseases see my brain my brain doesn't work that way you know I don't think about how to create diseases in order to kill people uh, especially those who are, you know, who who live righteously and, you know, do the right thing. So it's like, as far as my expertise, you know, I don't have an ex I don't have expertise in that field, in, in the medical and the scientific field. But I do know when coincidence is not coincidence. And I do know when people who who are influential, um, when they suddenly become ill, at convenient times, like Andrew Breitbart, you know, having the heart attack, you know, when he was about to expose Obama, um, and also Russell Poole, who was, who had a heart attack, I think, you know, he was in front of the police, like he was presenting evidence um, concerning the Biggie Smalls murder, and he had a heart attack in front of them, you know, as he was presenting evidence. So it's like, these convenient deaths, um, for the opposition aren't so convenient. Um, they appear to be planned. And when you look at the motives, sometimes you have to look at the motives before you look at the actual mechanics of it. And I'm telling you the motives are, you don't want, like, sometimes it's urgent where you have to stop, have to stop a person dead in their tracks. But as time goes on and you realize that if you do stop a person dead in their tracks with a bullet or whatever, and you see that that person that you wanted to stop, you wanted to stop their mouth, you wanted to stop their opposition to your, you know, evil plan or what, whatever. You realize that in stopping them quickly, they become martyrs, and people look more into what they were, what they stood for, because it's like, wow, they were killed. They must have been standing up for truth. But if you kill them in a subtle, subtle enough way that you know, it can be blamed on nature, it can be blamed on their lifestyle, you know, it can be blamed on chance or whatever, bad luck, then, uh, then you can say, well, you know, they, they, they weren't a martyr, you know, because they died a natural death. No one was opposing them because we can't tie their death to a bullet. Um, or we wait, like in the case of Robert Kardashian and uh, Johnny Cochran, we wait 
10 years and people f will have forgotten about you know what they did in terms of being the top uh, defense attorneys for OJ Simpson and I was caught up in that as well I mean I you know I I was caught up in that media frenzy but uh, it appears as though and I'm not calling them martyrs I'm not calling Johnny Cochran and uh, Robert Kardashian martyrs um, but it appears as though if what you do is in opposition to those who are in power at this point in time and we know that the prince of this world is the devil and those who he puts in leadership who took the temptations that Jesus rejected and accepted the world at the price of their soul, they're in league with Satan and they're subtle like Satan. And when you start thinking like they think in terms of being as wise as serpents but as harmless as doves, you start to see their, their mode of thinking and how they carefully plan out these assassinations of opposition in an attempt to not only kill them and kill their message but either alter the memory of them alter their legacy so that no one else can catch on after them or make it seem as though their death was a natural death or you know bad luck in terms of being at the wrong place at the wrong time like in the case of Clemente Pinckney oh well you know people think that some random 20 21 year old uh, dropout just ends up at this historic church and kills this important man and you know we're led to think that you know it was just chance just bad luck just bad health bad habits then you rob them of their martyrdom so it's like you can manipulate they're easily manipulated after death because they're not there to oppose it. But you can manipulate their image. And also in the case, I just thought about Steve Jobs and how, you know, they came out with a Hollywood movie and all. So it's like it's you can you can kill a person and then manipulate their image to where the public sees them as something else in order to further your own agenda, you know. And that that happened in the case of Bob Marley, where, you know, his revolutionary lyrics that got him threatened, you know, Martin Luther King threatened. And both both were revolutionary and also trying to bring people together. But that that is in opposition to the race wars, as, as you see today, where the media um, is trying to initiate these race wars and I guess you saw the beginning of it during like the well I, I, I can't say the beginning but like during the OJ Simpson trial where um, blacks were seen cheering and whites were solemn at the uh, at the verdict but um, when you when you think about uh, Bob Marley saying you know they don't want us to unite all they want us to do is fuss and fight and Martin Luther King bringing people together, you realize that that part of their message was more damaging than anything else. Because if people stand together, you know, rather than stay in their separate little groups, then we could figure out, you know, who is actually pulling the strings of the media to, to cause us to be against each other rather than looking at them. But um, like I said, you know, these these people who die mysteriously, who are influential and they die, you know, in their 40s, 50s, 30s, whatever. It needs to be looked into rather than because they're conditioning us to see deaths as natural. You know, people dying in their 40s and 50s is dying naturally or, you know, cancer is on the rise or whatever. But we really need to look at the motives behind getting these people out of the way. And we really need to look at the messages that these people were promoting that made them a threat to the evil system that we live in.